Hey everyone, Jared Robbins here and my wife, Amanda Robbins. Nice to see you all. Happy Monday. I'm gonna throw fireworks to start the week. What? No whoop, whoop. There they are. Um, today we are talking about emotional intelligence. And so real quick, the definition, just so everyone's on the same page. Uh, emotional intelligence has five core components. Number one, self-awareness. Number two, self-regulation. Number three, motivation. Number four, empathy. And number five, social skills. Hmm. For some reason, Instagram isn't streaming. Yeah, we'll keep going. I got it going. Hmm. All right, so you said, uh, can you repeat those five parts? Those were really good. <laughs> no, I got them. Uh, emotional regulation, empathy, but then I got distracted by the Instagram comment. Self-awareness. Self-awareness. Self-regulation. Yes. Motivation, empathy, yes. and yes. social skills. Yes. I'm going to figure out Instagram. Talk to me about these, it my love. It starts with awareness. That's it. With anything in life that you want to change, where you want to grow, where you want something different, to be better, do better, achieve more, whatever it is, it starts with self-awareness. If we are unaware of our own blind spots or limitations or the environment or anything, we're going to have a lot of trouble trying to make the changes to get to where we want to go. Yep. It's that simple. Self-awareness is critical in your life and your business, right? Like, let's be aware of where we're at and then where we want to go and then how we bridge the gap. So what I love is it start, started with self-awareness. Yep. And the next part was... Hold on. Self-awareness can be a little tough at this point in history. Um, I think two or three times in the last couple of weeks around coaching, I've heard stuff come up where self-awareness might have been lacking. I'll give you a few examples. Uh, one... Um, someone, we were listening to a coaching call of, of a coach coaching a client and the client was saying, you know, I show up to these meetings and I share this information, but these people just, they don't get it. It's just like straight over their head. They don't understand. And, and the coach said, well, where else is this showing up in your life? And he was, well, when I go home, my kids and my wife and, and my family, like I share this information and just again, right over their head. Where else is this showing up in your life? Well, even with friends, like I talk to them about stuff and I share this information and again, it's just right over their head. And the coach was like, well, the only thing in common with all of those situations is you. Yeah. yeah. And the person's like, no, that's not it. Yeah. <laughs> and, and it's like, what? Um, you know, you, you have these statements where people, and I'll, I'll go on a ledge here, where you hear these people ranting about, how this person they were in a relationship with is such a narcissist. But then you watch five relationships back and they're the only common factor that keeps finding the same type of person. And it's like, well, honey, what type of work needs to be done on you? Yeah. Um, and I'm, exactly. um, then they use gaslighting and, and all these other words to try to Pop defend like themselves. Yeah. But it's like, well, wait a second. If you've been dating for 15 years and every single time, you choose someone, you keep choosing the same person, yeah. you might need some self-awareness that goes, ah, either I'm really not good at picking the right people or something inside of me needs to do some work so that I can see these people earlier, sooner, faster, and make a better decision. Yeah. But either way, the only thing you can own, you can't own who the other person turns out to be, but you That's sure right. in heck can control the part of doing the work on yourself and learning how to build a filter to pick them out quicker. Um, and so self-awareness, the other piece that shows up in self-awareness is the ability to, to identify where your strengths are, where your weaknesses are. The opposite side was true. We heard another coaching call of someone who'd be considered a teammate or a, um, a, a an employee and their manager was not, able to express something usefully and and this person was attempting to let the manager know hey there might be a better way to do it yes and he attempted saying hey 
since you're new, you might want to ask more questions versus statements. Hey, you like he was trying to help this person become more self-aware. And what was interesting, the manager wanted nothing to do with it. The manager said, well, they work for me and that's not my problem. They need to figure out how to deal with it. It's like, oof, that self-awareness is lacking. And so if we think about it, what are the benefits of self-awareness if we were to start there for people? The benefits of self-awareness are, I would say, getting what you want. That is definitely one benefit because what stops people from getting what they want is being unaware of what it is about them or the situation or the, the awareness is lacking, right? Mm -hmm. If you are trying to get to a destination and you have no idea, you're not aware of where you're at, you're not going to know what route to take to get there. It's that simple. So it's true. one of the benefits for sure is if you want to get what you want in life, in anything in life, starting with doing some reflection, some deep diving, some looking in the mirror and really understanding where am I at, awareness. And sometimes... It does take a coach to be in your corner to help ask some questions that do provoke awareness. Does it sound like <laughs> this is why I don't work from home? <laughs> is Mina battling the sink monster? Yeah, it's probably my fault. Hold on. I really like this thought. Self-awareness <laughs> allows individuals to understand their thoughts, emotions, and values leading to a more authentic and fulfilling life. That's basically what I said. Thank you. Good for work. <laughs> Nailed it. I was just summarizing all the, the what you just said. I just captured it. So number one is self-awareness. Number two is self-regulation. Oof. Oh, goodness what gracious. Benefits. You want to dive into the benefits or what it is or how to do it? Yeah. Top five benefits of self-regulation. Your stress level. Your stress level. If you can regulate, I actually, I wear the aura ring, right? And I was just telling you, they've rolled out this new thing. It's called resilience in it. So it tells you how resilient you are. Mm -hmm. I love that so much. Um, so in alignment with PCU. Uh, so I was strong and it moved to most recently uh, expert or something like that, like expert resilience. I was like, that's pretty epic. And then it showed me throughout the day, my stress level is actually quite high. It's like on the very high side. And I was kind of surprised by that. It mm -hmm. gave feedback and said, high stress isn't necessarily a bad thing. Neither is no stress, right? It's about what kind of stress now it's affecting you. The thing is, the critical part is that if you have high stress, you are able to regulate. If yeah. you cannot regulate, so going back to benefit, the benefit of being able to regulate your stress levels um, is that you are more resilient. So the, the self-regulation, whatever tools that you want to use, but the key is that you can regulate and then therefore you are able to be more resilient during times of stress. If we do not regulate our body through stressful times, what stress do to the body? It creates havoc within the body. It creates dis-ease, right? So um, tremendous benefits there from a health perspective, uh, mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually. Um, your resilience, your resilience allows you to show up, do better, be better, perform better. These are all benefits of self-regulation. I love that. To summarize, I think what I heard was the top five benefits of self-regulation include enhanced emotional well-being by managing stress and negative emotions effectively, improved performance and productivity through focused attention and effort, stronger interpersonal relationships due to better emotional control and understanding, increased resilience in facing challenges and setbacks, and a healthier lifestyle choices by resisting impulsive behaviors. Did I hear you right? Did uh, you nailed it, Robbins. Am I so? Did you have notes for me? Are you reading the notes that I was supposed to reference? No, I, I, was, I was listening to all the, the words you were saying. I was just trying to pff, capture. I don't know capture. where you put these notes. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, let's real quick, let's talk about motivation, empathy, and, and social skills. So, motivation fuels persistence and achievement, driving personal and career goals. So, having the motivation to go after what it is that you want or desire, 
Empathy enhances relationship and communications by understanding others' feelings and perspectives. Social skills facilitate effective teamwork and conflict resolution, cru crucial for personal and professional success. Combined together, these skills improve leadership abilities, making individuals more effective and inspiring leaders. And overall well-being contributes to the mental health and satisfaction in life, fostering positive social interactions and a supportive network. So as you can see, your life gets better. Your work gets better. You're healthier as a human being. You live longer. You have better relationships. You're connected more to your community and loved ones. Like the benefits are insane when it comes to emotional intelligence. And the key is, and here's where I ask, how do you plan to improve this in your life? Mm. What are you doing to become more emotionally intelligent? How do you yeah, practice this? One. Where do you get the skills? I mentioned on Friday, uh, we have a mission to reach a billion young people through our buy one, give one program with Performance Coach University because as a performance coach, all these skill sets that go into emotional intelligence, those are the frameworks, the tools, and the skill sets we train coaches in. And after so long, I just heard so many people. I actually talked to a teacher on Friday, Saturday, her time in New Zealand, and she was saying, I just got out of a teacher's meeting and it drives me nuts because I'm hearing these teachers talk shit about the students, talk shit about each other, and also talk shit about the management and leadership of the school. And, and the teachers are lacking some level of emotional intelligence. Therefore, they're making fun of talking down to and belittling students, even though it can be rough to deal with students all day long. I get it at the same time. And what time. they've been through. But lacking the emotional intelligence to ask powerful questions, to help them build an empowering identity, to help them get the right habits and focus. Something that it I was telling Amanda this morning, something my mom has passed away, but a long time ago when I was in grade school, she used to volunteer at the schools and she was trained in coaching tools and methodologies. And she would always volunteer and tell the teachers, hey, why don't you give me the kids that are struggling, the ones who are D and C students who aren't doing very well, have them come sit at my table in the classroom and I'm the, I'm the class volunteer and I'll see if I can help them. And within a year or two, she'd have all those kids at straight A students. And the only thing she did different was using these emotional intelligence frameworks and tools. She would help the kids. She would help them build an empowering identity. She would help them set goals. She would help them build the right habits. She would help them build affirmations. She would help them overcome limiting beliefs, like all these little coaching tools. And within one to two years, these kids were straight A students. And all the teachers were like, wow, how did you do that? I didn't think they had that potential in them. And she's like, every kid has that potential. And it's one of the core beliefs she held that I think is so beautiful. Every kid has that potential if they're given the right frameworks and support in order to step into that version of who they are. Um, and, and so I'm, I'm really passionate. If we're going to reach a billion young people every year, then we need about 40 million teachers in this. So um, if you're That's interested... Cool. And if you're interested in gaining these types of skill sets yourself, please come apply to performancecoachuniversity.com forward slash apply. And if you're to land up um, enrolling, then we'll ask you to nominate a teacher that we can gift one of our programs to and help them also get these skill sets to be able to share in their school, in their classroom, and help those students um, navigate and enhance their emotional intelligence as well. Anyways, love, I think you have to go for yeah. your meeting. Thank, Thank you. you all for tuning in. It's so great to see you. Can I send, oh, sending love your way and some confetti. So, oh, where's my confetti? Okay. Conf Adios. See you later, alligator.